pretty much have like the controls of my player kind of cool like the way I'd want them. Now I just have to have something to jump on, something to smash. So I'm going to add another game object and add a cylinder. All right, and then move it up a little. It has a capsule collider, which looks like this. Fly up to it and whoops. For my player, let me just add one more thing. The rigid body, it could follow all the rules of physics, except I don't want to get knocked over, so I'm going to lock the X and the Z. So now if I press play and I try to come over to this guy and jump on him, see, I won't, I won't come off on the edge. Now I got an interesting question. Okay, if I land on it, I want the stomp effect. If I hit it up, the stomp effect is happening. Now I have some new conditions. I want my stomp effect only to happen on the way down. So let's see here. The start. See, now the script is getting bigger. Thing in Visual Studio, I could increase the size or decrease the size. I could hold down the control key and then use the mouse wheel to increase and decrease the size of the text. I'm making it bigger so it's easier for you guys to see. But now you can see our script is getting larger. So I could use this trick here of outlining, collapse the definitions. So I could see a nice outline of my script and try to figure out where I want to go. My task here was to do the thing that my object only does a stomp effect when it's coming down on something and not when it comes up. When does the stomp effect happen? It's happening in here when I collide with something. So I got to make sure I'm coming down before I play the stomp sound, the stomp effect, the stomp sound. Okay, so all this stuff should only happen when I come down. So how do I know if I'm coming down? I'll have to use the rigid body. Okay, so if rb dot, there's a thing on the rigid body called the velocity. That's like the speed that it's moving. So if the velocity in the y direction is less than zero, then I'm going down. So cut and paste. Uh-oh, I didn't see a stomp effect. It's happening there, but over here, it didn't happen. So something's not right yet. Let's go back and look. Why don't we see what the velocity y equals? I'm going to add um, some UI text. So I'm going to add game object UI text. And right now it's down here in the corner, text bug. So when I added the UI text, it added three things. It added a canvas, the text, and an event system. I'm looking at my game screen now, not my scene view. That way I could see where the text is going to show. So if I select the text debug object, so I'm just going to call it text debug. See, since that's what the name of my control is. And then I could control the size of the font. And you can notice when I make the font bigger, this appears and it doesn't draw anymore. That's because I have to set the overflow on both of them horizontally and vertically. And now when I make the text bigger and bigger, it still shows. Let's say I want this text to come out in this top corner over here. I click on this with the mouse, Alt key, and I click the top corner. So now when the screen is bigger or smaller, the text, it stays in that top corner. Then I could use the positioning. I could set the color. And if I had some other fonts loaded, now I don't, I only have the Arial font, I could change the font. Now what I want to do so I could check out what's the value of the velocity Y is I want to have the velocity Y displayed on this text debug. So I'm going to put this in the globals, private text. It doesn't know what text is yet. That's because I have to add something up here using unity engine dot UI. And now text turns green and everything I have to make it static and then down here I'll make a function public static void it doesn't return anything void uh, set debug text okay and I, I'm really spelling badly sorry and I'll have the string the message I wanted to display in here we have this text object 
But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to have a special tag, text debug. Okay. And then here for my text debug, I'm going to tag it as that. I could get that object. If text debug equals null, then it hasn't been set yet. So here in my global script, I'm going to have to set text debug. So text debug dot um, equals game object dot find game object with tag um, and I called it text debug um, so that finds the game object then I have to get the component from it the text component if now text debug is not equal to null then I could say text debug dot text equals the message I want to display on it. Now in my player script, I could display what the velocity y is. I want to see what the velocity y is all the time. So I'll just go here in the update function. And at the bottom of my update function, I'm just going to add some more code. Globals dot set debug text to, all right, string dot format. I'm going to have to translate the number into a string. Velocity dot y equals and this is where I'll substitute in a number or the value comma and the value will be rb dot velocity dot y so this is um, a function here string format it takes this string that's what the string is going to equal and then with these little brackets and the zero that's going to be the first parameter that I'm going to substitute a value in for whatever y equals it puts it in there and call set the bug dot text. I could go to that function, say go to definition, and here I am in my globals, and I see what it's going to do. All right, let's see what's going on. Right there, I didn't get a stop effect. And here in the corner, I could see it saying velocity y equals zero. It's kind of going off the screen. Let me fix that. Let me go back to the game view so I can see the text. And let me select the text. And then in the inspector, there are these alignments here. It was aligning to the left. So it starts from here, it keeps printing out that way, but I could align it to the right. So it starts from here and prints out this way instead. And just to make sure I'm not that close to the edge, I will set the X value off a little bit. All right, so you see the velocity. If I jump up, it should be positive. And then coming down, it's negative. But then when I hit the floor, I didn't have a stomp. And my question is, why? So the values aren't tricking me. They are doing what they were saying. But something's wrong over here. All right, let me do something else. Let me take it out of here. We saw that the values are changing. I want to see what it equals when the collision happens. So maybe when it collides, it's not moving anymore. And I press play. And I fall. And when I collide, uh-huh. When I collide, the velocity is zero. So I can't do that to see if I'm coming down. I'll have to think of something else. <sighs> okay, so if I'm moving in rb.velocity.y equals zero, then I could play the move sound. I'm going to use rb.velocity.y, the up and down value, to know if I'm jumping up or down. And here in rb.velocity.y equals zero, then I could jump because I'm not jumping up and down. So anytime rb.velocity.y is not equal to zero, I'm either jumping up, I'm either going up or going down. That's what I'm thinking. So here, if I'm not going up or down on the y, I could jump. That means I'm on the floor. Over here, if I'm moving and I'm not going up or down, then I could play the dragging sound. I'm dragging on the floor. This whole is jump variable. I don't need it anymore. When the collision happens, I don't need to know what the value of RB is when I collide. I need to know what it was before I collided. A private RBY. And then in, in the update function, I will keep setting that. RBY equals rb dot velocity dot y boom 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 let's see if this works and then when the collide happens can i do this now rby if it's less than zero then play the stomp sound okay it worked so i still got the stomp when i'm coming down 
And here, when I hit up on the character, it doesn't do the stomp. Huh. Okay, good. We got past that. That was an unexpected uh, situation. So now let's get, get back to things. Let's call this cylinder a can. Okay. And the can is going to be something that we could stomp on. So... Oh, let's go back to, I'm in the game view, you see, so I can't select anything. Let me go back to scene view. Let's give it a script too. All right, let's just start off with that. So create a C-sharp script, can, enter, and let's edit the script a little bit. So the can, it's going to require a rigid body too. Require component type of rigid body. Here's the can. Let's drag and drop the script for the can on there. Okay, drag it over here then. And there we got the rigid body, we got the can. Good, good, good. And let's say that when I hit the can, that something happens. Maybe I'll crush the can down a little bit. I'll just change the scale of the can. I will have to have what the scale was originally. So private vector three original um, scale. Then the start function, private void start. I'll set the original scale. Original scale equals new vector three. This dot transform dot local scale dot x. Then they do the same thing for y and z. This dot transform dot dot local scale dot y and this dot transform dot oopsie dot now you notice when I'm typing how things pop in, you see how transform got highlighted? I could just press tab, and that's how I'm kind of trying to type a little faster. Then I press dot, and I start typing local scale. As soon as it finds it, I see it finds it right there. It's highlighted in blue, and I press tab, and that's kind of a way that I could type faster in Visual Studio. So now I have what the original scale is, and now I'm going to have to have an event when can collides with something I wanted to do something. So one script can talk to another script. All right, I'm going to show you that. In here, these are private. So this is a private variable. You're not going to see it outside of in the inspector window over here. You know, when I click can, you're not going to see that as one of the variables. It's private. And then if I have a private function, you can't see it from another script. But if I make a function public then I could see it from outside. So I'm going to make a public void. Um, I'm going to call it crush can. And I'm going to have the can crush when this function gets called. So to crush the can, I guess what I'll do is I will set the this.transform.local um, scale equal to a new vector 3. This uh, will we'll go off of the original scale. Original scale dot x will leave that the same. Original scale dot y, we're going to get a portion of the y. So that would be 0.5f. And then in the z, we'll leave it the same size. Scale dot z. So who's going to call crush can? Let's go back here to player. And here's on collision enter. And this means we're on the way down. I should change this variable to be more meaningful. Let's call it rename this to previous velocity y. So I use this thing called rename. And it highlights it. I rename it. And then when I want to apply it, I press apply. Or I just press enter. And now in the code everywhere that had that, now it's called previous velocity y. Previous velocity y. I'm coming down. Um, game object coming down. What I'm going to want to know is what am I falling down on? So I'm going to give different objects different tags. So the floor, I tagged it as plane, and the can is not tagged right now. I'm going to make up a new tag for it. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to make a new tag called uh, enemy. All right, save. And then I'm going to select the can and set the tag to enemy. All right, that way I can tell the difference between if I touch the enemy or the plane, since I gave each of these objects their own tag. Then inside here, 
I could do a, uh, all right, let me just, let me put this comment up here better. And then in here, I'm going to add an if, uh, if, um, the collision object, this is what I'm colliding with dot game object dot. I'm going to compare the tag of the thing I just hit to see if I hit the plane equals true, then I'm going to do one thing else. If the collision dot game object dot compare tag equals an, an enemy equals true, then I'll do what's in those brackets. So if I hit the floor, I'm going to play the stomp sound and the stomp effect like I did before. If I hit the enemy, I'll do that also, but I'll do one more command. I'm going to call the can crush. So I'm going to get that the script of the object I collided into. So I'll call this script can is going to equal collision dot game object dot get component can. And now that I have that script dot and let's see if the can crush function is available. It is can crush. I'll crush the can. So one, now it has a rigid body, so it falls to the ground. Now I'm going to go over to it, jump up and I crushed it but it's still hanging in the air. You know why? Because the collider is a circle. <laughs> so maybe instead of a, instead of the can having, let's see what kind of collider it has. It has this capsule collider, you see? Maybe we'll change it to have a different kind of collider. So I'm going to remove the capsule collider and I'm going to add a box collider. Where are you? Right here box collider around it instead. All right, so now the box collider is the last component. I could move these components up and down. I could say move component up, see, and then it kind of switches the position. All it is is a visual moving of where the component is. It doesn't really change the behavior of anything. So now the collider is a box. Let's see if that fixes the problem when I crushed it. I'm going to jump on it and there you go. It, it goes down. So that's cool. I'm going to stop here. And in the next video, I think I'll have, we'll think of what we're going to do next with this to make it a game. Hasta la pasta.